this year, my uh, my clients, my um, average um, has been sixty five hundred um, per session, and that's that's just happening over and over and over again. Yeah. Hi, friends. Welcome to another episode of Success by Design with yours truly, Michael T. Davis. And I am here with the amazing Pam Fields, who is an, a stellar boudoir and beyond boudoir photographer based out of Vegas, photographing men, women, couples, erotica. She gets down and kinky and loves for her clients to have freedom and autonomy in her bodies. And I'm so excited for her to share with us um, how she got into it, her life in this industry, the platforms that she speaks on, and and how she really is successful in using Fundy and, and really providing her clients with not just amazing images, but amazing wall art as well. Pam, welcome. Tell us about yourself. Hey, Michael. Well, um, like you said, I live in Las Vegas. Uh, I've actually been here for uh, five and a half years. Um, I love the city. I, I love everything about it. So, and uh, even the heat. So, because we don't have humidity. So, <laughs> but um, I, uh, I've been on quite a journey. Um, it has been in a, a pretty incredible journey with my, my story. Um, I was a homeschool mom uh, back a while back and uh, left the workforce in 2006 uh, as we lived quite a nomadic lifestyle as my our life as my um, now ex-husband uh, built and grew his career and I stayed home and homeschooled the kids as we coordinated many, many, many moves. Um, the last, um, uh, before we moved to Vegas, the moving into, uh, the house I'm in now, uh, was our 14th move over a 12 year period of time. So let Wait, that four, sink. 14 moves. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Like let how that do you manage in. that with the family? It was tough. Well, I homeschooled my kids so they could have a consistent education. Um, and so I had, I have two two kids they're graduated now and uh with honors and uh you know because you homeschool it they can have honors so. <laughs> they both got scholarships merit scholarships for for college and everything so my son's a senior in college now and so he's almost uh, done my daughter's been done but um it, it was a lot um along the way uh i we when we lived in indianapolis briefly uh and i can't even remember what that year was maybe 2014, I think is when it was. Um, and my daughter started doing a little bit of modeling. She uh, was, I, I had just had a little point and shoot camera. We would play around taking pictures mm -hmm. and, and a friend of mine said, oh, she's really photogenic. And I know people that, you know, she was a landscape photographer. So she, so I know people who, who, you know, would, would love to shoot with her. So that's where I, I first got, uh, into photography okay. was uh, into real photography, learning the camera. People had told mm -hmm. me for many years that I had a really good eye. I should learn, I should get a real camera. And I'm like, well, this is a real camera, <laughs> my little point and shoot camera. Right? <laughs> and I, you know, but you could control the aperture. And I'm like, the who, the what? Yeah. <laughs> <It> was, <laughs> I, my eyes would glaze over. It was another language. And I had no interest in diving into it at that time. But when the time was right, um, I was in studio space and, you know, the photographer was shooting fashion on, on, uh, thunder gray. And I just, you know, I, I loved it. The lights and the, um, his style was very, um, appealing to me. And then another photographer did these conceptual portraits with the costumes and the makeup. And, and so I, I just, both of those resonated with me so deeply, um, that I went out and bought a camera. And uh, um, dove into the Nikon world, and uh, that's just what the first photographer shot. And so, I, if it's good enough for him, that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> you shoot what you know, right? <laughs> that's right. Um, I, I got a camera, I got some studio lights, and um, the rest, and and I, I got YouTube. So I, I had to also um, learn why my entry level Toshiba laptop would not even open Lightroom. <laughs> so I had to, <laughs> had to, oh yeah, I got to go get a, a better computer so I can edit this. And so it, it was, uh, 
that was a journey. Um, 2016, I went to my first photography conference where uh, um, it was Shatterfest, um, and it was the rest is history, I guess we could say. Um, I, awesome. It was through Shutterfest that I started developing my boudoir portfolio. And even from the very beginning, I was shooting um, one of my my first early sessions was uh, shooting a guy with his shirt off. It's actually um, uh, I was, uh, you know, they say imitation is the highest form of flattery. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. uh, Peter Lindbergh had this beautiful um, image of this um Spanish matador and his, his in jeans and his shirt was off and he was standing in this pose and the light and so I studied that image and said you know I want to I want to light some I want to figure out this lighting and so I did and that was one of the the very first images that I was really like, super proud of now I look back on it and I was like oh my editing was, <laughs> my editing was terrible but I I nailed the lighting for sure and mm -hmm. my editing skills have have uh have definitely improved since uh, since way back in twenty. I think since it was twenty. That was twenty sixteen. So okay. I mean, in the grand scheme of things, I've not been doing this very long. And mm -hmm. all the moves that we had and the twists and turns um, uh, with with my excess career, uh, I was not. I really didn't start focusing on the business side of things until we kind of landed in Las Vegas and then kind of got settled here and, and it looked like we were staying here for a while and um, which I'm I'm staying here for a while so yeah um, <laughs> you like running the town right <laughs> I, I will be not yet I gotta few we're people speaking have to, few, few people have to beat out so <laughs> yeah we're speaking into existence so yes. you know one of the things I loved about your story is your your non-traditional approach to the industry. Yeah. You know, you probably, you know, on your on your educational platform, you probably hear a lot of photographers talking about, you know, they started when they were young and they had a kit camera since they were a baby. And I always appreciate hearing the story from photographers who started later on in their life. Like it's a realization that there is no script right yeah. there there's no the right time is the right time that's right you know it's and not the right like, gear is the right gear too. yeah <laughs> so i appreciate you sharing it because a lot of people need to hear this you know yeah. they think you know if i haven't been doing this for 20 years then i'm not good enough it's just like start when you're ready yeah yeah i i totally agree and that you can be successful so i mean i in in the if i had to do it over again uh, which everyone could, has the one of these stories is, you know, I would have studied the business side of, of, of photography much earlier. Um, but I, I didn't because, and I still have a passion for, I'm always wanting to study the, the technical side of photography and improve my skills there. But, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. but the business side definitely has, has been my focus for the last couple of years. Gotcha. I love it. So I know you started in kind of like the fashion world. You start talking about how your daughter was a model and you, and you dove into that world. How did we get into like you really being an amazing boudoir and even erotica photographer? Like what was that evolution like? Well, it was, you know, in, in the studio with the, the lighting, I, I always wanted to shoot studio work and loved, loved, I, you know, I was never, I still don't like shooting outdoors. I like, I want to be in control of everything. And, and so, um, you know, I was shooting fashion and I, we moved to, to Memphis and I just, you know, I, I, gave myself all these negative messages. You could never be, look at all the competition. You could never make it in anything fashion mm -hmm. and your work's not good enough and blah, just negative, 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 all, all in me. And, um, and you know, I, I, so I said, well, maybe I could take my style of, of lighting and fashion. I could do edgy senior portraits. That's cause I, even from the very beginning, my work was, you know, I, I had this edge to it that, that was just came naturally to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, uh, um, but I was, I was shooting, you know, it kind of was a natural progression. I, I was always shooting, uh, male models and, and just, you know, I was doing a lot of trade work. I never charged anything in the beginning while I was learning. I, I didn't want to be a $50 photographer. <laughs> I wasn't going to be a shoot and burn like you know here's your cd with all the the images on it so i mean i went 
I went from being free to being, you know, a, a, a pretty a livable wage price point. So um, I think that's an important message to send people is, you mm-hmm. know, develop your skill set. And I understand people needing to, you know, to make money. But anyway, getting off topic there. But um, but my evolution came. I mean, I was shooting these models and, and just friends and, and people just to develop my skill set. And I just, you know, even... The, the first image that I did, the Peter Lindbergh image, I, I ended up, that was the a guy with his shirt off. So I said, okay, well, you ask your wife if um, we can take pictures of your physique. And then at, I'll ask my husband if we, mm-hmm. I can take pictures of mm-hmm. your physique. And so we did that. And that was, that was kind of the very first time where I was like, you know, I like bodies. I like the, I like the human form. I want to shoot more of this. And so that was, and I, I all, always was um, wanting to shoot uh, men and and women both. So whenever I started looking at boudoir, I didn't even really know. I mean, I knew what boudoir was, but I didn't. It it didn't resonate with me um, in the beginning because. I didn't really have a good understanding uh, with with boudoir and the level of empowerment. And I've I've gone through quite a transformation myself personally um, as I've gone on this photography journey. I've gone on a personal journey as well um, and and changed quite significantly as a person and have a better understanding of of the human condition through through the work that I do. Um, But eventually I ended up really niching into boudoir and Mm -hmm. uh, my first exposure was a style that's very different than the style it was very a lot of the light and airy work and and I said well I love you know I love this but I'm going to use my my lighting and my style um, to do these same kinds of images and it's it's really evolved from there from more of a, a traditional boudoir glamour posed uh, into into work that's more organic. Not saying that I I don't pose people, but um, but it's it there is a much more organic element to to the work that I'm doing. Yeah, and 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 now on your journey, you're beyond boudoir. Yes, right. You know everything yes. that I see on your website is beyond boudoir and embracing sexuality and embracing body positiveness and. And so where did where did that come in? Because I know boudoir is like, you know, okay, yes, that is it, it, quote unquote like taboo within itself. Right. But then you enter into this this kinky, this erotica, you know, phase of people just wanting to unleash their desires and you document that. It, I do. It's um, it's quite interesting because my client base is is not in the adult entertainment industry. They're you know I'm I'm not working with um, clients that have that have only fans. My clients are private individuals. Um, a lot of times, married couples. Um, and it started with me having a love for um, shooting uh, art nudes and um, creating storylines and passion pieces. I did one with. Uh, um, a model from Memphis who who I've worked with every year since 2016. Um, I, I we connect. We've become great friends, and uh, we did a piece on um, on mental health, and um, it was dealing with depression and self harm, and it was an art series that that we created together, um, and it was all nude, and um, you know those those kind of things. Just I just fell in love with creating art with uh, the human body. And I had not even uh, explored bodyscapes at that point. Um, This was in, I think this was probably in 2017 that we created that series. Um, But I started, you know, exploring more and more shooting uh, fine art nude. And then um, I ended up in early 2020, right before the shutdown, right before COVID, I ended up doing two workshops here in Vegas one was the art of nude storytelling, and one was um, a photographer's guide to shooting kink. And so while I was there, the instructors were, it was some of the best education that I had paid for. It was fantastic. Um, the instructors were, were very good. And um, in the photographer's guide to shooting kink, the instructors spent a quite a bit of time explaining the difference in the power dynamics and how, you know, you can't just come into this shooting 
you know, if you're shooting a, a sub and dom scene, then you need to under, have an understanding of the, the dynamics of that. You can't just, it's not just a, a playtime and, and, you know, shooting whatever you want to make it look realistic. And they did a fantastic job of explaining all of that. So I kind of dove in and just provided some, I'm not in a kink, kink lifestyle, you know, kink community or, or um, I'm not in swinger lifestyle. Uh, but some of some of the people are my clients, but more um, more than not, um, most of my clients are, like I said, just private people. They sometimes they're kink curious at best, um, and then other other clients have their own kink practices with with amongst themselves. And I I have a couple of clients that are in the lifestyle a uh, uh, swinger community, and so. Um, that's always interesting and fun. They come back every year, which is something I didn't expect whenever I started doing this work, that I have clients that, that shoot with me repeatedly. Um, and I can I can talk on that at, at some point if you mm -hmm. want to. It's, it was pretty mind-blowing for me, the, the progression of realizing that, oh, the clients are coming back again and again to, to work with me. Mm -hmm. You know what I love about this story is that you started off the conversation talking about self-taught YouTube University, and then you go to paid workshops and say, you know what, there's, there's more out there. And then you, and then you, you stumble on this, on this, this niche that mm -hmm. you're just like, you know, and you just ran with it. And, and I think it's a testament to a lot of photographers that, that are like, oh, I could just, I could just learn all this all myself. And it's like, yes, right? Like you can learn stuff online, but you there's some gems and yeah. like being in person with someone that you, you know, you love, you trust, you're interested, and that's a professional that can literally change the, 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 the trajectory of your entire career. Absolutely. And, and you can also, because this happened to me as well, I, I went to a workshop with a, a, a very well-known um, educator and, you know, what I paid for wasn't what I felt like I got. And, yep. and that's very common. <laughs> that's very common. So, I mean, one of the things that I teach on my platform is here's things you need to know um, when you're seeking out workshops and mentors because not everyone is the same. And and I'm so transparent. You know, I'm like, I know I'm training my competition, but you know what? I can't train someone to be me. And that's yeah. that's my secret sauce. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I don't mind telling, you know, telling people, especially people who've hired me for mentoring or who've paid to come to a workshop that, I, that I'm leading. Um, and it's different if you're in a, a 90 minute platform, you know, well, Shutterfest moved to two hours um, last year, which was really awesome. Uh, so it's different when you have two hours to speak, the amount of information that you can give and um, is different than if you're doing a four hour or six hour workshop. Yeah, no, awesome. I feel like this is like a masterclass on like, listen, you know, there is no one way to to accomplish your goals you right. know like and and i enjoy just listening to your journey and to your career thank you for sharing i i would love to to hear about um because you said you have a lot of clients you have a lot of interesting clients with interesting lifestyles and stories that come from all over the world mm -hmm. to photograph with you yeah. um could you share with us like something uh, a particularly that's most memorable or challenging photo session and how you were able to to overcome those obstacles? Well, you know, I have I, I have a lot of clients, and uh, part of my process is um, with those clients. When it comes to signing releases, um, I protect my clients' privacy not just with their images, but also with who they are, where they're from, what they do for a living, anything they tell me, anything about them. So mm -hmm. I I only have. So only stories that they've said, oh yeah, you can share that. Yeah, um, are things that because a lot of times I find that you know the work I do is obviously very intimate, and for people who are some people are on a therapeutic journey themselves, and they're doing this as an expression. Uh, some clients are you know have lived a lifetime of sexual shame. And they're finally at a point where they're saying, you know, I want to love myself. I want to to explore who I am, not just on a sensuality and beautiful, 
beauty side of things, but they want to take that next step and explore sexually and, and just to embrace everything about themselves. And so I've had quite a few sessions where, uh, one in particular, I, I think of, um, where the client came and, um, we set, we started doing the shoot and a lot of times my erotica sessions become, they're a boudoir session in the beginning and then we do a lot, we get into doing some fine art nude and then we get into some more sexualized images. And, um, and so during that process, when we started getting into the art nudes and um, just the mood kind of shifted and changed and we started talking on a deeper, more personal level, and she just started sharing her story of how she was in her, her mid to late thirties mm -hmm. and she mm -hmm. just started sharing her story of um, mental health issues and her, you know, undiagnosed mental health issues in her teen years and hospitalizations and, and uh, self harm. And, and there was, you know, there was just, it was so deeply moving. I stopped shooting and sat down and talked and just listened really and, and held space for her to just share and um and she did and it was good and we continued with the session it was a beautiful session and that happens quite a bit not necessarily sitting down and, and talking in depth with with clients yeah but my clients just get so personal with me and just share so much um it you know about themselves and who they are and how you know how long a lot of my clients are uh, most of my clients are are 40 and over and a lot of them are, um, my, with my couples, particularly it's um, people whose children are either older teenagers or they've gone off into college and they're empty net, the couple of empty nesters. And they look at each other and realize, you know, what's happened the last 15, 20 years of our life <laughs> where we're, you know, who are you? And, yeah, yeah. Um, and so, um, and I, I do have, um, it's a, it's a lapsed certification, but I do have a certification as a marriage coach, and uh, um, I have a background in psychology and used to, um, back in, in my previous career, up, uh, up until 2006, I, I worked with at-risk youth, so I have a have a, a, a pretty solid foundation in, um, you know, processing with people and, and talking people through trauma and mm -hmm. uh, their the, and then with married people in this situation where you drift, you, it's so yeah. easy to do when you have kids and, and then one day wake up and you're living with a stranger. And yeah. so <laughs> I have some clients that come to me just as, as part of a reigniting that spark and capturing, you know, reconnecting with each other. It's really beautiful. Um, and when, especially whenever they share that, they don't always yeah. share, but sometimes <laughs> they do. Well, you know what? I, I firmly believe that the universe makes no mistakes. Right? I agree. And yeah. and from you having that life experience where you were talking about your your marriage coach, your marriage coaching, your certifications, and and being trained to be able to give people space because that's a skill set. It Not really everyone is. is able to do that. And the beauty in you having that in your backpack. And being able to just take it out in this very, very just vulnerable space, this, this vulnerable industry that you're in, that's absolutely amazing. It's yeah. to, to me, it, it reminds me that, you know, our clients are people too. And yes, it's easy to say that, but sometimes photographers, you know, are just like, okay, another client, another client, you know, another number. I need to get my bills paid, you know. I'm but a robot. The, <laughs> yeah, it's like, but your story is a reminder that like these are people that have real life issues, that have um, real feelings that that come to us, you know, whether they're sharing with their words or with their body or their body language. And you taking that pause and just putting your camera down and giving them space, um, I know that was monumental, you know, because yeah. as a wedding photographer, I can see when my couples need that space mm -hmm. and I do the same thing. Like I kick people out of the room because I know they just need a moment because it's, it's no longer about the wedding day, it's about them. Right. Well, and the foundation of my business is built on my my connection with clients, you know, and um that's why clients book me for second, third, fourth, fifth shoots, um, you know, coming back again and again. And we, we established this relationship. I didn't really 
understand that or expect that whenever I started with this. And so it's been part of my evolution as well. And, and realizing that I had to unpack a lot with myself. I yeah. had to deal with my own shit. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, had to get, get a lot of stuff dealt with and, uh, which ultimately also, you know, included being divorced. Mm -hmm. So, um, and you know, just really unpacking that and dealing with that and understanding who I truly was before I could even get to that step with my clients. And so, um, that's, you know, 2023, my word for the year was authenticity. And yeah. so that's, <laughs> that's me just being real and authentic with my clients. And it makes such a, a huge difference yeah. in that connection and that ability to, you know, I'm talking to naked people. So yeah, no, so for sure. I, I need them to be comfortable. Yes. And um, <laughs> in fact, I think the biggest compliment, one of the biggest compliments, there's two big compliments I received. One of the biggest compliments I received was from a couple in, in the swinger lifestyle. And after their session, they said, um, you know, we have never been more, you know, he was naked. She had on some lingerie. Yeah. <laughs> he was like, I, I, I've never been more comfortable in front of anyone than I than I am. Or oh. than we, you know, we've never been more comfortable in front of anyone than we were with you. And I thought, wow, that's pretty. That's a great compliment considering it's coming from someone in the swinging lifestyle. Because mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. they've been in front of other people. Most of my yeah. clients. The great majority of my clients, this is this is a first time experience for them. They've never been naked in front of someone who's you know other than a doctor or their partner. You know, um, it's they and they certainly have never touched themselves or each other in front of of someone else. So it's you know it's a new experience for them. That is absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you for sharing that. So I, I want to switch gears. Um, you started out saying you started doing things for free. And mm -hmm. then you started charging. So where did that, the print lifestyle come from? You know, so being self-taught and saying in this world of, you know, digital, 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 you know, um, how did that transpire? And then where did Fundy enter into that? Like now everybody that comes to you walks away with fine art. Yes. And that's where it came from is, is showing showing my clients what images look like on, you know, on metal and on canvas and, and showing them albums and letting them see that, you know, this is beautiful in print and, you know, it's great on your phone, but, you know, are you really going to look at it on the phone? And I have, I have clients that contact me months and months and months after their shoot and say, we just want to let you know, we pull our album out every time we get ready to go on date night, look through our pictures, relive our experience, and it's wonderful. And so um, I have a, a older male client that is booking a second shoot and he let me know that uh, we did a beautiful bodyscape and he got it on a metal print. I think he's in his late sixties, early seventies, and um, it was, beautiful printed on this big metal piece of metal and they have it hanging in their bedroom. And he told me, he said, every time we have friends over, my wife takes them in the bedroom to show them <laughs> a piece of art. And so uh, he said, you know, I think it's time to create another piece of art. So Ooh, we're, love it. we're coming again. So I love it. And so how has Fundy helped you create this type of art? Well, Fundy has been amazing because, and <laughs> I wish I had, I wish I had, had come into it much earlier. Um, one of the things I, I love for my clients to be able to um, be part of the creating process. Some clients don't want to, but others do. And so Fundy just makes it so incredibly easy. I lay out albums and the options that they have available. One, it's very, it's, it's very easy to manage and navigate even uh, because I haven't been using it that long. I wish I had been using it longer, but um, it was so easy to just right away pick up and start using right out of the, you know, right as soon as it's downloaded, I could figure it out without a lot of, without a lot of like YouTube university stuff like, or Fundy university stuff. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. And so uh, the great thing about it is, you know, I could, I can look at the, all, it, there's so many different options for layouts that it gives you. And, you know, I can look really quickly on, on my screen and just see which one just 
it usually just jumps right out at me. I'm like, that's the one that we need to I need to go with. So I get it all laid out and the way it's so easy for them to proof and make notes and um it's just been it's been such an amazing tool for for my for me, but also an amazing tool for my clients to communicate back with me what their needs are and what they, you know, the what they would like to to see if anything different. Usually I get the design. I've I've not had very many come back and say they they want a different design yeah. with this. So it, <laughs> it, there's so many good options. Like I said, mm-hmm. one just jumps out at me as being this one. This one is the the right one. So gotcha. um, I definitely love it. Awesome. Do you have like a favorite feature um, and funny that you just could not live without? Well, there's several actually, but the <laughs> you know the proofing is fantastic. Um, that is one that. Um, you know, for my clients to, like I said, be able to go in and put the notes the way they are. And um, that I just love that. But the other feature, like I said, instead of building an album manually where you're like, let me see how this one looks. Let me see how this one. Oh, let me add these borders. And, you know, just doing it all manually is so time consuming. So, the you know, the feature where you can look at all the different layout options for your set of images, it, that is that is invaluable. It is yeah. that that made that made, even if it didn't have the proofing that alone <laughs> uh, makes for such a better album design than what I was offering before. Yeah, the so, design library is extensive. I, it, I I love it too. That's one of my favorites. I haven't favorites. even explored all of it yet, but I've uh, but whenever I you know whenever I'm sitting down to do an album because I do I I push that with my clients. You want mm-hmm. this in print? In fact. Um, you know, my, the collections, especially on the erotica side, the collections that people buy are the ones that come with the, with the album. Beautiful, beautiful. So I would love to hear, you know, we talked about, um, your business. We talked about Fundy, how it's improved your business and your productivity. Mm -hmm. Um, could you share with us either like your most memorable or your, or your biggest sale to date? Oh, um, let's see my biggest sale to date um, from one client was uh, a client that was coming in on Grammy weekend and it was um, a combined um, boudoir and art nude and couples session but it also was a, um, a lifestyle session because they were you know they wanted pictures getting ready uh, getting ready going to the Grammys and then pictures of them after they're dressed and and everything so that was a custom quote and it ended up being um uh, quite a bit. So, um, it was, that was my biggest sell today. It was, awesome. uh, uh, uh $14,000, awesome. uh, for that day of, I say a day of work, but really, <laughs> you know, it's way more than a day of work. People don't understand that. Oh, mm-hmm. you're just, you know, you're just doing a photo shoot. You charge so much. And I'm like, it's not just a photo shoot. You don't yeah. just, it's not just that one, that one day of work. It, there's mm-hmm. a lot more to it than that. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but that was, that was my biggest sell. That was, um, that was i i think that was in um, covid year messed me up that was in february of 21 when i had that big sale and that that what maybe it was 22 i can't remember Mm -hmm. but anyway Mm -hmm. um but whenever that happened it that's the light bulb went off and i said wait a minute (laughs) wait a minute (laughs) People will pay me this much money for, you know, only one day of work. Really not one day of work, but you know what I'm saying. Um, And so, um, you know, so that really motivated, motivated me, lit my fire that this is going to be the price point that I'm, I'm landing in. And so, and even this year, my, um, my clients, my um, average um, has been 6,500, um, per session. And that's, that's just happening over and over and over again, where clients are getting into, um, I'm moving up and, and that's by design. It's, Mm -hmm. it, it Mm -hmm. was something, like I said, I never wanted, I went from being zero to already being what a lot of people consider expensive. Yeah. Um, and then by design, I, my plan was to move into the next level and I'm on track with my timing. So, um, so once this goes, I've got another, I've got my next plan in place, uh, for, for taking it up one more notch. So 
Beautiful. I love it. And and, and that what I love even more is that you talk about how the light bulb went off, right? Yeah. You're just like, you, you, again, going back to being self-taught, going back to, you know, just taking fashion pictures, entering into this entire different world, investing in yourself, in your education, um, trying different things out to now making these big sales is like, like, yes, like yeah. I can do it. And people are coming to you because they trust you because you, you, you put that stuff out there. I love it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's been, it's been pretty fascinating and, and, um, exciting for me because I was financially dependent on my, my ex-husband for all those years. And, um, you know, when I left the workforce in 2006, he and I made the same salary. And then from 2006 forward, um, it took me, getting to the point that I am now where I'm able to financially support myself. And so, um, it's been just amazing. Awesome. Well, first of all, congratulations on that journey. Thank because you. Cause I know it's not easy. <laughs> so, no, <laughs> I want to um, give you that kudos. Yeah. If I, you know, if I say if I and people ask like, what advice would you give to, you know, photographers? And I mean, I really, if I had to, do things over. I would, I would have invested in mentorship and small workshops, um, earlier in, in my, my journey. I think I, and I would have invested more time in understanding the business side of things and why it, my artist heart wants to, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> wants to, because I've always been artistic. I've always, you know, I've, I, I paint, I do poetry. I do, you know, there's, I, I interior design and so there's always been a creative element uh in my life but once i found photography then i just wanted to just learn photography mm -hmm. and learn you know and i i still have notebooks full of ideas of of concepts and things i want to shoot that are you know very personal to me and and uh, artistic projects so i have a client coming tomorrow who has said you know i love everything you do so whatever you want to do so those those are the shoots that i yeah. absolutely love when a client is like you know i i give it to you just i'm i'm i i'll be your muse and so those are the I'm best like, feelings yay right? <laughs> yes <laughs> Perfect. And so I love how you, you, you talked about, you know, that business piece of it. So go, going down that rabbit hole, um, you already know that Fundy has created a new app to yes. help save people time, productivity, workflow, um, the social design app. So um, and I know you know a little bit about it and you have some some plans on implementing it. Yes. I would love to hear your thoughts and how you plan to incorporate it in your own workflow. Right. Well, you know, you said a key word there, productivity and workflow. And, and that's something that I've really come into a, a lot over the last year and a half um, because it's it. I'm always working and it's, you know, I've got to take things off my plate. And one of the things about um, the social design app is that, you know, you can use this to go ahead and prep all of your social media images and um it's really great um for people that are familiar with canva you know it's it's got all the templates in there and so and it's specifically for your social media so you don't have to go figuring out what do i use and how do i do this and so um my plan to use that now i'm I'm a solopreneur. I do everything myself. I, I very rarely, I don't outsource anything on a regular basis. Um, I, last year I outsourced a couple of things, uh, big projects I needed to do. Um, but, uh, so my, one of my downfalls is, uh, or one of my, my problems is that I don't post on my social media near, nearly enough. Mm -hmm. And so with the, with my new CRM that I I'm using, uh, lead savage, I put, they have a whole section where you can post your social media. So I'll be doing uh, the social design app to per, to get all of my images ready and to get, my, you know, my my captions. Uh, I think you said that they're putting some, so the ability to do some video, which is gonna be great when that comes yeah. out because that's another area that with the changing landscape of SEO and social media, video is becoming such an important tool. And that's one tool that I've got to get in my toolbox. Um, but, uh, but the social design app, having that in my toolbox is definitely going to help with my workflow and speeding things along on getting my social media, breathing some life back into my Instagram. And yeah. at least in 
until they decide to shut me down because they, <laughs> they don't like boudoir photographers. Yeah, so, and no. they definitely don't like art <laughs> nudes or erotica. So, mm-hmm. um, those are, you know, you have to be, be a little careful with that. Yeah, for sure. So this is the final question before we jump into the rapid fire. Okay. Um, what are some skills or qualities that you think are essential for people who are just entering this industry or people who've been here for 30 years and just, you know, they, they're trying to get to that next level. Yeah. Yeah. What, any skills and qualities that you think are essential for success in this industry? Um, I, you know, I think the ability to have, uh, to create a, a safe and welcoming space is a, a judgment free environment for your clients. But I think before you even take that step, what you have to do is you have to understand your value system, your belief system, where it comes from. Is it external or is it internal? Is it the messaging from society? Because don't know if y'all realize, but society tells us a lot of crap that's not really true and and accurate. And that's what creates a lot of this sexual shame in people and just all kinds of things, prejudice, bias against other people who aren't just like them. And so, I mean, and I've gone through an incredible journey and I can't, we don't have enough time to, to share all of this, but I've changed so much because Mm -hmm. I continually evaluate my life and self-discovery, I think is the, I think one of the most important things for a photographer to be able to do is go on a journey with themselves before they start a journey with their clients, because you have especially because we're working with people who are willing to be so vulnerable with us and to, you know, and we've got to create a space that is, is comfortable for them. One of the, that's the feedback that all my clients give is that, that they're so incredibly comfortable working with me and they understand my boundaries because I understand my boundaries. I know where they come from and I know, you know, I know how to hold space for my clients without it crossing into my boundaries or into theirs. And that's, to me, that's just a key for success with, especially with boudoir, but even more so with, with erotica as well. I love it. You know, when you said that, it just gave me chills. Like that was a sound bite. Like, you know, <laughs> like you have to go on a journey with yourself yeah. before you start the journey with your clients. And, and, and I'm reminded as a big a, story, <laughs> right? I'm reminded as a parent, right? So I have three kids, um, six, 10 and 15. Mm-hmm. And in order for me to be present for them, I have to understand what does being present mean? Like, yeah. what is that? What is what does that look like for me? Um, and when you were saying that, I, I'm thinking of, you know, not every photographer is a parent or is a caretaker, but that that journey and that self exploration is so important to understanding other people. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yes, that's absolutely amazing. L- listen, this is a, a master class on consent, self exploration, yeah. body positivity, like like everything you're spewing are, are things that photographers think about. Yeah, but don't talk about, you know. Right. And I'm so glad that that you have blessed us to begin this conversation and to continue oh, this you. conversation. Um, absolutely, absolutely amazing. So we are going to jump into my favorite segment, rapid fire. Um, so I'm just going to ask you a few questions. First thing that comes to your mind so we can get to, to know the T about Pam. Just there we go. More. Okay. Here we go. <laughs> awesome. All right. So we're going to start off with a softball question. Okay. If your life was that. a story, what would it be titled? Oh, um, Pam's wild ride. <laughs> ah, I love it. I love it. I love it. All right. What is your favorite lens to shoot with? Um, Right now, I'm shooting with a Z uh, 24 to 70. That's my okay. that's my go-to lens. Awesome, awesome. Um, do you like to travel to the beach or mountains? Oh, I would prefer beach. Beach, I mm-hmm. love it. Favorite snack while working? <laughs> Anything chocolate? Chocolate. As long as there's no no mint. No okay. Mint. Oh, I I don't understand Mm-mm. why people mix mint Mm-mm. and chocolate. I, no, I, don't, I know. I don't get it. <laughs> no. If you could win an Olympic gold medal, what would it be in? Uh, photography? Do they have Olympic photography? <laughs> Listen, you're going to create it, right? <laughs> I, I, I will. Watch me do it. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, what print product makes you the most money? Um, metal prints. That really is. Um, I my clients love their. It it's been 
kind of mind blowing some of the images that they that clients are printing. It's it's amazing. Beautiful, beautiful. Who was your first celebrity crush? Um, bon Jovi, I think. Okay. Pretty sure because I had his poster, like ten of his posters on my wall when I was a teenager. So beautiful. Best advice you've ever received. Um. Most recent advice that I ever received that I would say is probably some of the best came from my very wise 24 year old daughter who said, you know, when you worry and stress about something that hasn't happened yet, you're traumatizing yourself with that. And then if it does happen, you're traumatizing yourself twice. If it doesn't happen, you've traumatized yourself for no reason. And so, um, easier said than done to to not worry about something that you have no control over, but um, but that's that's such amazing advice. I've had to I remind love it. myself Look. when I've dealt with things that oh you're traumatizing yourself that may not yeah. even happen so just wait 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 so, they look at you raising wise children right I, I tell you the homeschooling I taught them I didn't care what they learned I wanted to teach them how to learn and I wanted to teach them logic and critical thinking skills mm -hmm. and phew, I, I did a good job so gotcha. I can't so, win an argument against <laughs> them because they get all Socratic with me and start asking questions and then I'm like okay y'all are right <laughs> awesome so just a few more uh, biggest clue that a client may be a pain in the butt or problematic um, well they usually don't become a client when that happens because the biggest clue is they they step out of bounds with me they mm. they i usually prompt a client a, some people are really eager <laughs> and um so that's it when if they step out of bounds with me i i it sends up a red flag and i don't i'm, I'm very strict i don't take all the clients that want to work with me mm -hmm. so um some clients want to work with me and i'm just you know i realize they've They've overstepped my bounds during our consultations. So what would they do during the shoot? If, mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. Gotcha. Two more questions. Okay. Uh, would, would you rather, uh, or, or I'm sorry, what superpower, if you could choose any superpower, would you have? Oh, this one's so hard. Um, I think I would choose um, a telepathy. That's okay. What I would choose yes. Telepathy. I love you know it. I feel like that goes it, like it's full circle on everything that you're talking about, I right? Could be, yes. Yes. <laughs> Not only could you use it in my work, but I could use it in all kinds of places, like mm -hmm. the casino. That. <laughs> gotcha. He's the last got, one. Uh, describe your style in one word. Mm. Um. It's a hard word. Um, I would say. Sensual. That sensual. would be the sensual. I love it. I love it. This is, Pam, this has been amazing to chat with you. Thank I'm you. so excited for other people just to listen um, once, twice, three times on just all the gems and valuable information that can help them be a better person, not just a better photographer, right? Because we talked about how to be a better person too, right? Um, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and, and before we wrap up, I just want to give you some space and some time to tell people where they can find you, how they can learn from you, how they can work from you. Because after listening to this, they, I know they're going to want to learn some more. So right. the floor is yours. Go ahead and tell us. Well, I can be found in uh, Las Vegas, uh, and my website is um, pamfieldsphotography.com. Uh, I struggled with trying to come up with a brand name, and I, I just determined, you know what? I am my brand, so that's that's it. Um, uh, you know, I I don't have definitive plans right now, but there there is a high probability I'll be doing a winter workshop um, in Vegas. Um, I have a speaking engagement in April 2024 uh, in Boston, and it's um, men's erotica uh, photography uh, work, uh, retreat. Well, the retreat is a erotica, kink and erotica retreat, and um, that's through the After Dark group. 
um, that is hosting that retreat. And then uh, I've got a couple of speaker applications in, so no word yet on, on those, but hopefully I'll be selected and people can, can see me speaking at a couple of national conferences as well. So, Beautiful. Um, and but I do offer, I do mentoring with, uh, with people. And I also do, um, I do offer workshops at other times. If, if I have enough people reach out, um, and, uh, want to come to Vegas or I travel as well. So I'm always happy to guide people along this path and, and get them started and show them, show them all my tricks and secrets and tips, um, uh, for, um, for working with men and working with couples and then working beyond boudoir, if that's their interest. I love it. Pam, just thank you. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> I appreciate I you having me on. Um... Not a problem. So this was a success by design with Fundy Podcast and the amazing Pam Fields. Uh, I feel like you just need to write a whole memoir right now. <laughs> You know, that's so funny you say that because l this last week, I literally, the words came out of my mouth of, I think I'm going to write a book. Yep. And the so and it's going to be a memoir and photography book combined. <laughs> so how it all kind of works together. Because if, if my, the story of my life had happened any differently, you know, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. So if my mm -hmm. divorce had come at any other time in my journey, I wouldn't be living in Vegas. I wouldn't be a photographer. I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't have the skill set that I have. It's just been amazing and incredible. Yeah. And like you said, I believe that the universe, everything is in perfect timing. Perfect Absolutely. timing. Absolutely. Yes. Well, you've so. been amazing. And I can't wait to meet you in person and yes. to chit chat more. Thank Anytime you again. Anytime you're in Vegas, let me up. So yes. always, it's one great thing about this city is <laughs> photographer friends come through yes. pretty regularly and we can <laughs> meet up and, and uh, have a meal together and, and get to know each other. For sure. And if you guys are watching this, please drop Pam a love note because she's just been sharing amazing gems uh, just about life period. Um, and she would love to hear how you thought about the entire podcast, her entire life story, and her approach to a very, very niched field. Um, and so I'm so honored and so glad that you're able to share this with us. Um, so till next time, friends. Yes. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.